Alright, howdy folks! Now we're running. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> we had a little fluke the last time I tried to start this. Okay, let me put that aside. Seems like everything is working. Hopefully nothing breaks. This is a very precarious setup. But we are doing something a little bit different today. I've been promising a beating workshop for ages. And it occurred to me today that I am less than six days away from said workshop. And <laughs> I haven't really done much. I've made a lesson plan, I've gathered some resources, I started working on some samples, but I'm not actually formally prepared to teach it yet. So today is not the practice run yet. Today is just a chance for me to get comfortable working on this pattern so that when it comes time to teach it, I'll actually remember what I'm doing. Um, yeah, just get some samples going. I started a couple here and it's basically just a way for me to see how well this setup will work come Wednesday. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'm working on something called Easy Peasy Earrings today. This is a pattern by Jill Wiseman. It's freely available. She's given permission for others to teach and uh, make earrings using this pattern. And given that it's nice and simple, I thought it would be a great candidate for a beading workshop. And this is my first time doing this kind of approach with a webcam. Uh, it's going to be fun trying to get this thing to focus. That's all just to help me get ready for Wednesday, so bear with me, it might be a bit painful, but yeah, it's fun to try stuff that's a little different. Alright, um, so for this pattern, we've got a few different tools available here. We're going to be using Fireline Thread to hold all materials together. Um, I'm going to be using the crystal version today, just because that's what I have the most of, but depending on what your pattern is, it might be worthwhile to use the smoke color, which you can see is a lot darker here. Um, I'm using the six pound weight. Different threads will have different weight depending on what beads you're using. Given that this is such a small dainty piece, we don't really need it to hold a lot of weight, so four to six pounds should be fine. I've got, uh, I don't remember what size threading needle this is. This is either 10 or 12. And I'll be using two different types of beads. We've got size 11 seed beads here. I'm going to be trying different colors to see what pattern I actually like and want to use for the workshop. <laughs> I don't I don't quite know yet. I don't like the colors I used for my already made samples. So we've got 11-0 seed beads. These are kind of the standard seed bead size. They're the most common ones you'll find. Um, I like to use specialty beading stores, but uh, your generic crafting store should have these available to you. So like Michael's, uh, probably Joann's, etc. Depending on where you are. And then the other type of bead we'll be using is a, a four millimeter bead. And this can be any kind of bead as long as it's that four millimeter size. Hello Chan Chan, I am live! Yes, we had a bit of a hiccup trying to go live, but I think everything's working now. So here we are. Welcome. <laughs> How are you doing today, my dear? I hope you're having a great, I almost said Saturday, it's Friday. I hope you're having a great Friday. <laughs> um, so we've got a couple different types of four millimeter beads here. These are called Preciosa, Preciosa, Preciosa. It's a stranded crystal. Let's see if I can get this to focus here. Uh, maybe if I go a bit further back, I'm, I'm testing my beading setup for my upcoming workshop. My camera hates going in focus. So we're just playing around to see what does and does not work. There we go, okay. So you can see these are a bit rounder. Uh, they've almost got kind of an octagon type shape to them. So I've got those. I've got, what are these ones? Do, do, do. These are check beads, it looks like. Got a nice fancy blue here. These are what we call fire polish beads. I don't tend to use these as much because they're quite expensive, but they are very beautiful. So if you have the budget for them, these are also fire polish. I've got a really nice pinky salmon color here, if I can get it to focus. <laughs> anyway, so those are a bit more expensive, but they're lovely if you want to go that route. When's your beading workshop? It is Wednesday at 4.15 p.m., which is why I'm in a panic now, being like, I need to get ready for this. <laughs> beading within an inch of my life. Yes, that is accurate, one point. Hello. <laughs> 
Um, so this is some more kind of specialty four millimeter. The ones I'll be using for today, I think, are going to be, let's see, I've got, I can do this, thank you so much. Let's take a look at my pearls here. So these are, what do we call these, glass pearls. And I tend to use these a lot because they don't look cheap, but they're actually pretty cheap. So the ones I get through my beading store, you can get a nice big strand for $2. <laughs> there are other types of pearls that will look a bit fancier and be a bit more expensive. Whoop, there goes that one. Um, but again, these, these can look really nice in a piece, even though they're not super pricey. Um, so I think what I need to decide here is which of my four millimeters to use that would go nice with these seed beads. So I'm using Dark Topaz Silver for my 11O seed beads. And they're pretty versatile, but I think I'll do... Hmm, I think I'll do this color, and this is Rosewood. Okay, so we're gonna need eight of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. We might try some other color combinations, but we'll start with that one because I think that's uh, I think that'll turn out okay. <laughs> I'm very picky about my color choices. <laughs> okay, so let's set that down there. Beaten within an inch of my life. <laughs> Okay, so we'll need eight of those, and then for seed beads, I just dump these into a little pile. I don't really care about counting them out. We can just put them away afterwards. And, oh, that's actually <laughs> the wrong color. I was like, why is that so dark? Hang on. Hang on. Ah! While I clean up my mess. How's the sound balance, guys? Hopefully it's okay. Again, this is all kind of a new setup for me, so... I expect things may fail, but I'm trying to make them not fail. I to not poke myself with my needle here. Sound is good. Glorious. Thank you. Smoking Guns of Liberation. Ooh. That's a title. Okay, you know what? We're just gonna scoot this over. There are actual dedicated beading mats that you can get, either through a craft store or if you want to go, again, the budget option you can make out of felt. Um, I would normally use those. I'm using the back of a mouse mat today because it shows my thread better <laughs> against a darker background. Um, but use what you have available. I really need to know is which one of these beads is more effective at catching rainbow trout. I mean, this one's pretty rainbowy. I feel like that could do the trick, maybe. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm gonna pour out my actual correct seed beads this time. Do, do, do. Just do. That should be good. Okay. Um, so that's the bulk of our materials. The only thing I haven't shown yet is the fish eye or the fish hook, which we'll use to make the actual earring <laughs> that will go through your ear. Uh, but we'll come back to that later. So let's put this on. Oh, there's a rogue seed bead. They get everywhere. They're very tiny. So I'll put these over here for now. Okay, so first thing we'll need to do before we can do any stringing is to get some string. As I mentioned, I'm using six pound fire line. And again, depending on what beads you're using, that might help dictate what color you use. I have smoke and crystal most typically. Um, I don't have a lot of smoke, so I think I'm gonna just work with the crystal, even though this smoke would probably work better for these beads. Um, and you don't need a lot of thread. It depends on how big you want to make these earrings. The pattern is really adaptable, uh, but I'm just going to do two links to it if I can find where this thread starts. Where are you? Uh, there you are, okay. And I usually do about, let's see, the pattern calls for about one yard long. I'll usually just stretch out my arms both sides and do an arm's length. I like to have a lot of extra thread just in case I screw up and need to cut something. Um, but that's probably excessive. Okay, so we'll do that. We'll cut off our thread. And we can now get that out of the way. One thing I'll mention about the fire line actually um, is that you can find this really cheap through 
just like your generic hardware store. So for example, uh, I would go to Canadian Tire and buy Fishing Line. <laughs> it's the exact same thing, um, but when you buy it through beading stores and craft stores, they will apply like a little beading label to it and mark the price up and it's horrendously expensive. So you can get larger size, 125 yards is what I usually find in the store and you can get them cheaper. It's the exact same, but the branding for fishing versus beading is what changes the price. So little tip there. And once beaters discovered this, uh, Canadian Tire in particular started going out of stock of this quite often, but you can, you can uh, every now and then snag them <laughs> off the shelf if it's there. Okay. And now the reason we're using what is essentially a fishing line is because this is a very, um, loosely stitched pattern and you want the basically the weight of the piece to hold uh, you don't want it to be too flimsy otherwise it's not going to maintain its shape whereas with other patterns it's okay to use a more lenient thread which is um, where you might have beading thread threads such as like Nymo or something but with this you do want to have a stiff thread and so what I'm doing right now is I'm just threading through that line through my needle there you go. And again, you can use a 10 or 12 size needle for this. If you have trouble getting your thread in through the needle, it can be helpful just to flatten the end of your wire. And uh, for example, I have here just some flat nose beading pliers, as we call them, and you could just squish the end of that and sometimes that'll help you beat it through. Depends on if it's a problem for you or not, okay? So that's threaded. We have this nice long wire and now we can start beading. And this is where I need to refer back to the pattern because I haven't memorized it yet. Okay, um, so we're going to start with our seed beads. You're going to pick up four of those. One, two, three, four. Okay, we've got our four on there. We're going to take that, we're going to pull it all the way towards the end of our thread and we're gonna leave a tail let's see usually um, the pattern calls for about six to eight inches if you're paranoid like me you can go a bit longer but I'll, I'll probably leave about that much for my tail now this this can be a bit finicky um, and it will get in your way as you bead so if you prefer a shorter tail and know it will be long enough for your pattern that's fine but again I just like to be safe okay so we've got our four beads towards the end now, opposite end from where we had our needle threaded. And we're gonna go back through all four of those beads. So okay, we've got the fishtail at the end here. We're gonna come from the opposite side and go back through all four. If we, you'll know you did the wrong side if you try and go through and all your beads fall off the line. <laughs> all right, so you wanna go through the opposite. That's gonna make a little loop. We'll pull that through and just bring the rest of our thread. It's going to make this little circle here, but you'll notice when you try to pull it tight, you get kind of a line of four and then this extra string. And the way to get that gone is we're going to go back through again, but we're not going to do all four this time. We're just going to do the very first one. Okay, so we'll go through number one here. If I can get my needle to cooperate. Okay, so just the one. And then the other three will still be on the first line. I'll note for the actual workshop I'll be having um, printouts for each of these steps so it's a lot easier to see especially if my camera is being a fussy butt. And hopefully that'll make it a bit easier to understand what's happening but once we go through that one pull that nice and tight And that will basically create a little cross shape if I can get that to focus. It doesn't want to focus, that's annoying. There we go. Anyway, <laughs> hopefully you get the idea. We'll have like a little cross shape, a little plus symbol almost there. We'll pull that nice and tight. And that's going to be what we work off of next. So now, let me go back to my instructions here. So now we're going to get the center of the loop that forms the, the main chunk of our earring here. So we've already got a seed bead. 
Now we're going to go to our four millimeter bead. And again, I'm using the glass pearls here. And we're going to alternate. So we have pearl, seed bead, pearl, seed bead, pearl, seed bead, Let's see, I need pearl. Oh wait, I said don't pick up a seed bead and then I picked up a seed bead. <laughs> Start with pearl. No, there it goes. It's like this is wrong. <laughs> That's the one thing about these pearls is they can be a bit uh, clunky around the hole. Sometimes the beads stick together and you pull them apart and it leaves this little chunky stick out thing. It's annoying. So I recommend smoothing those out before you start, unlike me who just hopped right in. And we're basically just alternating so that we have four pearls. Let me go get this one that ran away. Eh, stubborn. <laughs> I'm gonna pick it up here. There we go, okay. So you're gonna have four pearls and three seed beads with the fourth seed bead already being on our piece. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and the seed bead in between each. Hello, Jichan, welcome, how's it going? Happy Friday. We are experimenting slash panicking. Oh, wait a minute. What did I do? Oh no, I screwed up. <laughs> I already had a pearl on there. Uh, I have to undo that. Boo! Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> this is why we've practiced before doing the actual thing. Let me close this out. Okay, so can't actually hear stream, I think is what you're saying because you're at work. That is good. We appreciate you hanging out. Okay, so now I have to restring that including my thread. <laughs> this is all a normal part of beating. You screw up, you have to undo it. Hopefully you haven't progressed too far when that happens. I'm just restringing my thread here. We got my earbuds at my desk. Oh no! Okay. So I already have one pearl on there, so I'm gonna go, we have one pearl. Seed bead. Pearl. Ooh, thunder, hello. If my power suddenly goes out and the stream dies, that would be why. Didn't think we were getting thunderstorms today. It's okay, Manx. It's okay, my love. Okay, so one, two, three. We'll put you over there. Duh. Duh. Okay, I think I got it that time. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So now we have four pearls with the seed bead in between each. Okay. And now what we want to do is pass back through this first seed bead on the opposite side that the thread is coming out of. Okay, so all our stuff is coming down here and you want to go through the opposite. And again, you'll know if you go through this way, it starts to undo your work. So basically working by rule of opposites when you're adding beads to your piece. Okay, so we're going to go down through that bottom seed bead. We're going to pull that tight and uh, feel free if, if you guys think there's some um, stuff that would be confusing for an audience member, throw that in chat. This is all to help me improve my teaching skills for this kind of format because I've never done it before. I am very open to feedback. Okay, so we're going to pull that tight. And there is the base of our piece. And now basically what we want to do is we're going to go around to each of those seed beads and add this little cross shape to the outer edge of all of them. Okay, So we've pulled tight, we're exiting the top seed bead, and now we're going to go down through one pearl and one additional seed bead that'll get us to the other side. Pull tight. Oh, my thread's stuck on my webcam. Don't do that. 
You can't see it, but it is indeed a very awkward setup. Now, if you notice, <laughs> your piece might start to come loose like this. That's okay. Just pull it tight, very gently. And the main thing you want to be careful of with these little crosses that are sticking out is to not have your thread get caught on those, because that's how you get knots going. So just uh, use your other hand to keep thread of the, out of the way. You'll notice I'm cupping it, this tail, with my left hand. And I'm also using that to maneuver so I don't get stuff caught on these little sticky outy parts. <laughs> okay, so here we are. Focus, focus, please focus. That's all I ask. That's all I wish of you. Anywho, we're coming out of the, <laughs> the seed bead on the far side now. We're going to grab three seed beads. We don't need a fourth because, again, we're already using the one in that inner circle to form the fourth one. So we'll grab three seed beads. And same rule as always, we're coming out the top, so we're going to go in through the bottom. And if it gets stuck, you may need to kind of go down into the pearl and then up. Ooh, Radical Dreamer is nice. It's like this sounds familiar. Oh, Chrono Cross, how I love your soundtrack. Okay, so there's the three. We'll pull that tight and this one actually goes ahead and forms that little cross shape. We don't need to worry about reinforcing it like we had to the first time. Yeah, that really does not want to focus. There we go. It's hard to see still, but again, I'll have the printouts to illustrate that better. Okay, and basically rinse and repeat. So we're going to, again, we're coming out of the seed bead. So now we're going to go through the pearl. The seed bead again. Ooh, yeah, it's really getting dark out there. My goodness! Pull that nice and tight. So... <laughs> If you're new to beading, this is a skill you develop as you go. You want to make the piece taut enough that it doesn't fall apart as you're going along, but sometimes if you stitch too tight, it can actually work against your piece. So you're basically trying to find the middle ground and that comes with practice. I tend to stitch too tight no matter what I do. Um, but you can always go back and reinforce any of this part of the piece after the fact. But once you make it too tight, it's kind of always too tight unless you undo the work. <laughs> so um, that would be my encouragement is to kind of get the balance for holding together without being at the risk of breaking because it's too tight with your threading. Okay, and we're basically going to do that two more times. So three seed beads. Oh, the thunder mags, it's scary, I know. Okay. Cross number four, and then we'll do our last one. You'll notice my tail thread is kind of getting in the way, so I'm just gonna push that back. One, two, three. And go through the final one. Oh, wait, I added those before I went through. <laughs> my pearl and my seed bead. That's important. There we go. Okay. One, two, three. There we go. Okay. So now, I can get this to focus. We've gone through, we've added those cross shapes to all the outer edges. This one's a bit loose, so I'd want to just fiddle with that. And that's kind of the nature of this pattern. They're not perfect, but that's okay. It depends on what beads you use too. But if you wanted to reinforce that cross shape, you could go back through the outer edge of all of these uh, little picos here. I don't tend to do that. No one's going to notice unless they're right up in your face staring at the earrings. <laughs> uh, which, you know, maybe people will do that, but if you're not worried about that, then you don't need to really reinforce them too much. But we do want to make another one of these, because we want to have two kind of these 
core pieces to form our earring and then we'll add the um, fisheye earring hook to it. So we're basically going to need to get down to this bottom pico. We're up here at this top seed bead. We need to get down to the bottom here. So we're going to go through this inner circle of pearls and seed beads. And then once we get to the center one at the bottom, we're going to loop through those 11 O's down to this one. So let's go ahead and do that. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Okay, how's everyone's Friday going? It's been a it's been a weird Friday here, so I hope yours has been better than mine. There was the day started with a pukey cat, and then a hacked Netflix account, and then I spilled water all over myself and the floor, and it's just been that kind of day. Okay, now this is where you need to be careful by. Um, Tail thread just got caught up in this, so I'm just going to straighten that out and make sure that doesn't get caught in anything. There we go, that's good, because that can actually um, knot your wire, so I'm just going to tuck it out of the way here. And I only go through a couple beads at a time here, and that's again just to help me reinforce the piece as I go, make sure it's nice and taut. If you were to go through like all four of these inner beads, um, you might lose the hold of that pattern. So seed beads I'll even go through one at a time sometimes. <laughs> Come on, there we go. Got one more of the pearl and seed bead to go through till we're at the bottom of the loop. Okay, so now you'll see at the bottom, see bead. Now we just need to go through these two to get to the bottom of that little cross shape. Tired? Ah, uh, yeah. Fair enough. Ooh, that thunder's really going. Hoo -hoo -hoo. Very tired. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. Okay. Bam, there we go. Alright. So that is basically what you do. And again, once you kind of reinforce that piece, you can go and flatten out these seed beads if they go a little wonky. Again, if you went through each of those, outer crosses, they would be less likely to get flipped around, but I tend to make it first and then I fix it up later, so that's what it's going to look like. There, it's finally focusing. <laughs> and so basically, we want to do all this again a second time, just like we did up here. So we have the one seed bead, so we're going to do the pearl, seed bead, pearl, seed bead, pearl, seed bead, pearl, and that will form our outer loop, and then we'll go back and do the three outer cross shapes, same as we did before. And you can basically do as many of these as you want. I tend to go for two or three, depending on how dangly you want the earrings to be. But you could also add like little teardrops to the end using other beads. You could do all sorts of stuff, um, which I won't get into today because I want to keep it a bit more basic. But it's a very uh, adaptable pattern. So you can just kind of go crazy and do whatever you want with it. So again, we're going to do four pearls, each separated by a seed bead. Ugh, come back. Three, and last one. Okay, so again, four pearls with the seed bead in between each. Bring it to the end of your thread, watching this tail thread, getting it out of the way. Getting it out of the way, please. There we go. <laughs> okay. And same as we did before, the opposite that your thread is exiting from. So our thread's coming out here, which means we're going to go through the opposite side. Pull that tight, and it'll give us our second inner loop. Okay. 
And there it is. Okay. Now we're going to get the crosses. So go through pearl and a seed bead. Pull that nice and tight. Okay. And then three seed beads. Coming out the top this time, so we'll go the opposite side, the bottom of that seed bead, and pull through, and that's going to form the cross shape. So what I'll probably do during the actual workshop is have some pre-made samples that are partway through the process, so I can basically start the second one and say, okay, now you'd go through a repeat for all of these, and then I could just pull in the already finished piece. That'll save me a bit of time, because I only have uh, 30 minutes for this workshop. And I'm basically at the 30 minute mark now, so again, I will streamline this a bit more, but that's one of the ways that will help. But given that today is mostly focused on making some samples and getting used to this setup, we don't need to worry about the time so much. Yeah, it's a little loose. I might need to go reinforce that. Okay, three more. Opposite side, pull through. Nice and tight, so that's the bottom one here. Get to the far side. Not get tangled in my tail thread. And this will be our last part of this earring. Using our main beads anyway. Just pull that tail thread over here. There we go. Okay, so now we've got our main body of our earring. And this is a little loose, so I'm probably going to go through this inner circle one more time and I also like to reinforce anywhere that has either um, connections so like here this little inner loop of seed beads connecting the two main top and bottom pieces um, and anywhere that's gonna bear weight so whichever end is gonna hook up to my earring hook uh, we'll be reinforcing that as well but let's go ahead and maybe reinforce this inner circle here We're gonna go through our uh, pearl and a seed bead. Mm, do wish that camera was a bit clearer. Okay, and I'm actually gonna flip this now. And that's the nice thing about this pattern because it's symmetrical. You can flip it, you can turn it, you can maneuver it whatever way is easiest for you and it'll be fine. Um, but I don't know if you can see it here, there's a little bit of thread showing in this inner loop. So I just want to go through that again and tighten it up. And again, because that's a connector piece, I don't want that to get too flimsy. So I'm just going to reinforce and secure it a bit more. And I'm going to go one seed bead at a time here so I can really um, tighten up my thread at each step of the way. I'm going to pull that tight every time. This kind of goes back to what I was saying before. It was okay that this was a little loose initially because you can always do additional passes to tighten that up. Whereas if I'd made it too tight to start with, I would either, you know, the piece might become too stiff depending on the pattern, that can be a bad thing. Um, or because these are such small beads, if you pass your thread through it too many times, it can actually, uh, cause it to break potentially if it gets bent the wrong way or if it has too much pressure put on it, etc, etc. Um, so you want to be mindful of what beads you're using, you want to be mindful of what weight of thread you're using, how thick that thread is, etc. Um, and just not, <laughs> not overdo it, which can be tough, especially when you're still learning, right? It's, it's a process, but okay, I think that should be good. Go down through here. 
I need to be mindful that I'm not uh, going off camera when I do this. I get hyper focused on the piece and then I look up and I'm like, ooh, we're starting to get close to the edge there. Okay, that's a lot better. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's a lot uh, sturdier now. And so, um, the last thing I'm going to do, well, two things. We're going to attach the earpiece next, and then we're going to tie off our remaining thread, which I think you could do this on either side. I think I'll just tie off this piece at the end, and we'll do the earring up here. So same thing as when we were adding the connector piece. We want to get down to the bottom hook here, or the bottom seed bead, and then we'll add in our hook. So again, I'm going to flip this piece around because that's easier for me. And I'm just going to go through the inner beads again here. You can go through the outer crosses as well if you want, but I think they're stable enough for my purposes. Oh, we're stuck on my webcam again. Come back here. Ugh. Actually, mm, I'm second guessing this now because I don't really want to waste this thread. Maybe I will make that the earring piece. Okay. So we're just going to tie off the end of this thread then. And we'll have lots left still, but I could probably use that for another earring. There's honestly enough there. So I'll show you guys how to tie off thread. This piece, you actually probably don't need to. You could just weave it through and snip it and it would hold because, again, it's, it's an earring. It's not going to have a lot of... Um, pressure put on it and it's not going to be jostled around a lot, but I am paranoid and like to have at least one or two knots in my pieces no matter what, so we will do a half hitch knot. And I will try to show you how to do that here. It's a bit hard to see with this, so again, this is something where I'd have a printout, but we're exiting our inner seed bead here. I'm going to go through the inside of that loop of beads. You probably can't see that very well, that's okay. And I'm gonna pull that thread. Let me get my tail out of the way. Get out of here. Blech. And the more you work this thread, because it is fishing line essentially, it's gonna get more tangled and bendy and obnoxious. So that's why it's good not to have too much extra thread if you can help it. Uh, I, I hate myself apparently and do this every time, so <laughs> I just have to deal with it. But you're gonna pull that through the inner loop until you have just a small amount left here, the circle, and you're going to pass your needle back through that and pull that tight. Oop, and I'm stuck on something. Oop, there we go. And again, this is where you have to be careful. This is actually getting stuck on this other end here, so I'm just going to move it over to where I looped it through, which was coming out of that seed bead, and I'm very slowly just going to pull it making sure it doesn't get stuck on anything else and make that nice and tight and that's what we call again a half hitch knot so it is now knotted right next to that seed bead in the inner circle like i said i like to do two so i'm gonna go over i'm gonna go through my pearl and another seed bead and basically do that one more time and then I can cut the thread. Ooh. Keep getting stuck on stuff. <laughs> oh, so tangled. Nice and tight. We'll do another half hitch. So again, we're coming out of seed bead on the right now. Go through the center from the bottom. Pull up. Pull almost to the end of that thread till you've got this little circle. And then go through that again. And basically you're forming a knot around the thread in this inner circle here. Okay, so I've got two now. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go through a pearl and a seed bead. I get to that inner circle. This is a nice um, tightly threaded part of the piece and that, that's where I tend to like to cut my thread because I feel more confident that it will hold. So we've got it through there. We're now in the inner center. I'm gonna get my 
special beading cutters. You can use any pair of scissors to cut this. I like these because they're nice and sharp. And the main thing you want to caution here is to not cut uh, any important parts of your piece. So I'm going to get that set up and I will basically make the piece flush with my scissors and cut them as close as I can to the piece. Now I've got this extra set, I'll just get that out of the way. I'm going to grab my needle off of that before I toss that. <laughs> and that's how you tie off your piece. Yeah, I just don't think this wants to focus no matter what I do. <laughs> eh, there we go. Okay, so we've got this tail thread from when we originally started. We're going to go ahead and put our needle onto that. Eh, maybe, there we go. And we are coming out of the inner seed bead. So again, we're going to go up two so that we're exiting at the very top of the piece. And that's where we're going to attach our earring hook. Okay. So now we're at the top. And for these, there's different styles you can use. Excuse me, Megs, I need to reach over you for a minute. <laughs> there are different styles. I keep meaning to look for hypoallergenic because I have cranky skin that hates everything. Um, but again, you can get different colors. Most craft stores will carry at least two or three varieties. And you basically pick whichever you like. I think I'll go with these because I have so many of them. <laughs> Are uh, those okay? Those look good. And again, if you have different colors, just consider what will look nice with your piece. I think actually... Hmm, could have used these darker ones as well. They would work. But I think the silver works best. Okay. So you'll need two of those if you're just making two earrings. And this is where I actually deviate from the pattern a little bit in the PDF I provided. Um, in Jill Wiseman's tutorial, she actually has a, what we call a closed jump ring that's used to connect the seed bead to the earring piece. But um, if you don't have those materials or, or you know, wanna kind of streamline your budget a little bit, they're not super expensive anyway, but <laughs> If you want to just make things a bit simpler, you can actually um, directly attach your piece to these earrings. The only downside is that, um, I don't know how close I can get, because these are what we would consider an open loop, there's a little gap in the wire here. Your thread could technically get caught on that, and with wear and tear it could break the thread. Um, oh, why is my phone going off? Shush, shush, shush. Fireline is pretty durable, so that's less of a concern compared to like typical beading thread, but it, it can happen. Um, so you just want to be careful to make sure you don't have any sharp exposed edges for any wire pieces that you're using, and those closed jump rings can be one way to get around that. But for us today, we're just going to use this. And so basically how this works is we've got our piece with our seed bead. And we're going to essentially sit this on top and just run the thread through both of those pieces probably four or five times so that they'll sit together and that should be more than enough so we're already exiting our seat beat oh there's that thunder my goodness uh i think i'll go this way yeah, we'll do that <coughs> excuse me and then we will go through the loop in our hook earring. Pull that nice and tight. And it's going to sit there. Now this will be a little flimsy to start with. That's, that's okay. So we pulled it through the loop and now we came out of the right side of the speed. So again, opposite, we're going to go in through the left. Oh, 
Pull that nice and tight. And it's basically just gonna sit like that. Now this will be a bit loose, especially the first few go-throughs. But the more you reinforce it, the more it's gonna stay put. Mm, I need a water break. One second. <laughs> Sorry, I tend to switch my hands a lot. <laughs> See beads actually shifted, so let me pull that up. And you're basically just gonna repeat that loop until you feel like it is secure enough to hold shape. I, again, I usually do four or five times. <laughs> now the more you go through again the more stubborn it can be because these are tiny beads and there's only so much space for thread to go through Each time I finish that loop, I pull it nice and tight. Actually, I think that's pretty good. I did. I, I don't know if I did four or five there, but I'm pretty happy with that. So let's see if I can get it to focus. No, it doesn't want to. Oh, there we go. Okay. So yeah, it's just sitting right on top of that seat bead. And now, once you've got the hook secured, you can just go back down into your piece, whatever direction you want, doesn't really matter. Reinforce anything that needs reinforcing, and then you will tie it off again like we did at the bottom of the piece. I'm just going to reinforce this upper loop a little bit here. I think I'll do a knot on this, this C bead here. So again, half hitch knot, we're coming out of the seed bead, we're gonna go through the bottom and up through the center of that inner loop of beads. Pull it tight. Make sure it's not getting stuck on other beads and then go through the little loop that's left. And I will do one more, probably on the opposite side, just so I get a chance to reinforce that too. Oh, you don't like that thunder, Mags, do ya? I actually love thunderstorms. <laughs> You've been getting a fair amount too. Okay, so I, I reinforced over here, I'm gonna go to this side, do a half hitch knot, and then uh, snip my thread. And our piece will be done. And out the seed bead from the bottom through the center, and then back down through that loop. Pull tight. Hello, Vicky, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. We're just finishing up this earring here. Okay, and I will go through my pearl and my seed bead. Again, because we reinforced this top piece a few times, that's nice and tight stitching and that's where I'm going to snip my thread because it will hold really well there. And then the top inner seed bead. Pull that through. And now I'm going to snip it. Again, being careful not to snip any other part of my piece. <laughs> There we go. Okay. And there is our earring.
Oh, I wish that camera would focus better, but <laughs> this is the point where I'd go back and just straighten out any of my seed beads that are a little wonky as I was <laughs> maneuvering my piece around while we were stitching. Um, I've never found a way to get these completely perfect. No matter how much you reinforce them, just the nature of how these beads sit together, they're gonna push things around a little bit. But again, like, if you're looking at it from afar, no one's gonna be that close to notice. <laughs> They'd have to be like right up in your face to be like, I see that seed bead is askew. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's basically how the piece looks. Mm -hmm. Been lurking. This reminds me a lot of trying to restring my classic guitars. I have never tried to restring a guitar, but I can imagine the pain that would be involved. <laughs> there we go. So yeah. Now again, you can do some variations on this pattern. Um, like I said, I tend to do two, but you could do, you could add another one of these bases to it and have like three danglies. You could add like a, a tear shaped bead at the bottom, a, like a drop bead and have that dangling down and the pattern that Jill Wiseman has um, shows an example of how you would do that. Um, yeah, just for simplicity and time today, I've, I've done kind of this basic set. Um, and again, if you have different colors of beads, or if you have different types of these 4mm beads, you can do different combinations. I'll show you guys. I was trying to make some other samples and wasn't quite happy with them, but these are both using 4mm pearls, but different colors. It ended up... Uh, lighting! Lighting is a thing that affects your piece. So when I made this originally, it was pretty dark and late at night, <laughs> and I thought they worked well together, and they're, they're not bad, but... When I looked at them a day, I was like, oh, that's really purple. That's not the color I thought it was. And sometimes it looks almost black. So it's like, hmm, that doesn't quite work the way I thought it did. It still works okay, but it's like, ah, oh, it's not quite what I was going for. So try looking at your beads in different lights and different times of day and even like indoor outdoors. Like if I step two feet away outside, it completely changes the look of my piece depending on the lighting. So uh, just another thing to be mindful of. Yeah, those were some pearls that I did. I also started a piece using those fancy fire polish beads that I was talking about before, if I can ever get this camera to focus. There we go. So you can see those look a little bit different to the pearls. These are very round. These have more of an oval shape and they're faceted. So that's going to change the look of the piece a little bit and it's going to change how the piece interacts with the seed beads. They actually have a little bit more space on the edges, so you see those pico crosses on the edge actually <laughs> hold a little bit better than in this piece with the circles because they're pushing against those seed beads and kind of like crumping them together. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's essentially how you make the easy peasy earrings. Da, 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 da. Okay, so now. I need to figure out if I want to make some more samples or if I'm happy with with this. I think I'll, I'll use this color combo for the workshop. I think those seem okay. I just wish my camera would focus better. Um, mother made jewelry. The last one reminds me a lot of what she made. Oh, that's so nice! I, uh, I only started making jewelry a few years ago. Basically, my aunt and I went to a Beating 101 workshop and... I was instantly addicted. <laughs> it is a very addictive hobby, uh, but it's a lot of fun. I started more in the wire wrapping side of things, um, but I have reoccurring tendonitis and I find that's kind of rough on my wrists. So stringing and stitching has been a, a bit more of uh, my hobby in recent years. Yeah. There we go. I don't know if you caught the context, but um, at the beginning, I mentioned that I'm teaching my first beading workshop on Wednesday, and I've never taught a beading workshop before, so I was like, I should probably make sure I know how to do this and make sure my setup works. And for the most part, I think I, I'm comfortable with this. The only problem is getting my camera to focus. <laughs> it's really hard when you want to show these minute details and your camera's just like, nah, blurry mass, it's fine. <laughs> uh, I think it'll be good enough. Like I said, I'm going to have printouts for each stage to give kind of a close-up of what they'll look like. And that should do the trick. Seems good to me. Ah, oh, thank you, thank you. Well, I think that's as good as it'll get, so... <laughs> Whew, uh, let's see. 
I'm almost now I'm debating should I make another sample? Mmm. I kinda wanna try with these because they're kind of in between the pearl and the fire polish in terms of their shape, and I've never tried these before. But I need to figure out what color will work with them for seed beads. I don't really like that. Um Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna move these out of the way. We're gonna clean up our other beads, actually. Mm -mm -mm. So how long have you been playing guitar? Get these up here. I don't want to lose that needle. The only stringed instrument I have is a uh, Celtic harp, which I haven't touched in years. And uh, have not yet had a string snap on me, but <laughs> I fear the day when I'll have to restring it. If I ever pick it up again, it's just been kind of sitting in the corner, unfortunately. Size 12, 14, 15 years out. Hey, nice! That's awesome. I, uh, I used to play flute as well, but once I hit university and wasn't really in a band anymore, it kind of just fell to the wayside. <laughs> I've lived in basement apartments ever since, so you're always just kind of like, uh, do I, do I force my landlords to listen to my decade-old playing? Or <laughs> Restringing a harp sounds not fun. I'm just terrified of it snapping and smacking me in the face and losing an eye or something. I'm sure it would be fine, but <laughs> it's a little intimidating. Okay. Do you play any other instruments or is it uh, mostly guitar? Okay, Miss Mags, I need to reach past you, my dear. No, I'm not getting up. It's not dinner time yet. You're gonna go? Okay, but, well. You have dry food. Wet food has to wait. Yes, my dear. I have that fear every time I change my guitar strings. It's, it's scary. I don't like it. <laughs> the nice thing about flute is uh, you didn't have to worry about strings. You could just piece three parts together and you're good to go. Okay, so what goes with this color? And again, we're getting at the point where it's a little late in the day, so I'm gonna pick it tonight and be like, it looks great, and then tomorrow I'll be like, this is horrifying. That's okay. Um, oh, this is actually a good illustration. I was mentioning at the beginning why I like to use pearls, and this is why. The beading store I get these from, the four millimeter, two bucks, you get a nice big string like this. And they can actually look really nice, even though they're cheap. <laughs> they look pretty. Play piano, sax, and cello. A similar situation with trying to learn cello. I didn't want to torture the people in my apartment neighborhood with my learning. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, though. That's a great array of instruments. I always wanted to learn piano, um, but I was just one of those children who would not have had the focus for it growing up. And it was only once I was like a teenager that I was like, oh man, I wish I would have, but I know I wouldn't have. So I do have a keyboard that I kind of tinker around on here and there and mostly learn stuff through YouTube tutorials, but it might be fun someday to actually legit try to learn. The nice thing about harp, at least, is that it's not one of those instruments that sounds awful <laughs> when you're learning it. So even though you're playing badly, it still sounds at least somewhat pretty. That wasn't the case with the flute. <laughs> and I actually started on piccolo, that was even worse. Um, okay, what colors do I want here? I'm gonna pull out random seed beads. Um, oh, Chrono Trigger, heck yes. Favorite game of all time. I don't really like any of these, let's see. Hmm. How long have you done harp for? Maybe it's just my perception, but harp looks hard to get the grasp of. Um, I mostly tried, and I say quote unquote tried, and that I did not try very hard at all. I mostly tried in high school in the beginning of university. Um, and then after that was kind of like the grad school years where I just had no time for anything and that's when it went in its case and stayed there ever since. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I probably gave it like a couple years and was like, oh, I'll get back to it someday and now I'm like, 
if I try to tune it, the aforementioned strings will snap from lack of use and I will die. <laughs> I'm sure it would be fine, but... Ooh, this is a nice color. I don't know if it goes with this, but I like it. Hmm. Kind of want to try it. Let's try it. Yeah, I, I don't know. The nice thing about harp was that um, the strings are color coded. <laughs> so if you needed to find like a C, you'd look for the red string and it was really easy to just figure out where your hands needed to go. But getting the gist of Imagine it's like piano, getting to figure out where you need to put your hands and <laughs> get the get the notes. Oh, sorry, Minx. Takes practice. I'm sorry, honey, I didn't know you were on the floor when I put that down there. Did I scare you? I'm sorry, my dear. You good? Come here. I'm sorry. Okay. Mm -mm. Increasing the amount of force that is put on the strings of an instrument. It's a legit concern. I was where my glasses, but I'm scared a string is going to break. It's true. <laughs> I, uh, I occasionally wear glasses and that I'm uh, slightly nearsighted, but I'm always like, if I'm doing any activity where I feel like my eyes are in peril, it's like, time to get the glasses. Great for that. <laughs> okay, this does not want to open. Blah. Okay. So these are, I should have done this before I took these off, these are uh, Miyuki seed beads, again size 11, indigo iris, and I got these, these are actually, I, I got these online, so if you want certain colors, depending on where you live, it can be hard to get them. Um, it's actually got these, I think this is from the States, or crystals. They have some really nice stuff. Okay, actually, I'm gonna get this ready so I can put the extra... What are these? Oh, these are five... Oh, wait, that's a five inch strand. No, I, just, I thought that was four mill or five millimeters. Like, that's not right. No, they are four millimeter beads on a five inch strand. So we need eight of these again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. Ugh! Oh, there they go. Go get it, Megs! If you do beating for any length of time, your floor inevitably becomes littered. Okay, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm just gonna put the rest of these in here so I do not lose them. Come on, there we go. Okay. I'm to do. Alright, now do I have enough string from that last pair of earrings to not uh, have to cut new thread? I think there's enough. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay. It's like a Lego like situation where we found the beads are hard to pay for. <laughs> yes. So accurate. It's kind of funny if I, if I go on a cleaning spree under my couch is always an adventure to be like, oh, look at all these beads. <laughs> I thought we're lost forever. Here they are. Okay, so let's start this again. Uh, now, same thing. We're going to start with our seed beads. Oop. I think I knocked my camera over a little bit. There we go. So we're going to do four seed beads. One, two, three, four. We're going to pull that to the end of our string. So six to eight inch tail at the end. Go back up through all four, starting at the opposite side. You'll know you've done it wrong if all your beads come off the thread, <laughs> in which case, do the side opposite of that. Pull that tight, so it'll give you four in a row. Form a nice little line and then you'll have your string off to the side there and to get that into a nice little cross shape we're gonna go back a second time only going through one and not all four like that again if you want that tail thread out of the way I like to just hold it 
in my non-dominant hand. I'll pull this tight. Well, these are definitely a lot easier to see. Maybe I should do this color instead. Never mind, I spoke too soon. <laughs> anyway, there's our cross shape. And now we're going to form the inner circle, so we're going to do four, four millimeter beads and three seed beads alternating each. So four millimeter seed bead, four millimeter. Ooh, these are harder to pick up though. Ooh, come back. Seed bead. Oh, that thunder, my goodness. Come here. Oh, so stubborn. Three. Three. Four. Oh, I believe in you, bead. You can do it. Please. Come back. It's gone rogue. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> there we go. So we've got four four millimeter beads and three seed beads, with the fourth seed bead being on our piece already. It's okay, Megs. I know you hate the thunder. You're a scaredy cat. We'll pull that tight so it's up against our piece. Ooh, I don't know how well that's going to sit on that, though. Okay, and so we're exiting from the right, so we're going to go back through that first seed bead on the opposite side. And that will form our inner loop to the piece. Something like that. <laughs> And now we want to make that cross shape on each of the other three seed beads. So we'll go down through four millimeter and exit out of the 110 seed bead. And again, if you notice your piece starts to come apart, you can just pull it tight here. And then I like to, oh dear, oh goodness, oh goodness. Pull it tight and then I will sometimes just hold Hold that piece with my non-dominant hand, pull tight, and then you can just pull the needle and thread through there, and that'll help keep it together. And when you pull tight, you'll you'll actually feel the piece kind of snap together, and that way you know it's not too loose with your thread. Okay, so now, same thing as we did before. We want to get the outer three 11 O's, so we'll pick up three. And we're coming out the top of the seed bead in this case, so we're going to go in through the bottom, always going on the opposite side. And if your uh, needle won't go through, you can actually go down and up a little bit into the four o or the four millimeter bead if it's giving you trouble. There, there it goes. Again, pull tight. You'll feel it snug together. And we'll rinse and repeat. So go through the four millimeter, go through your seed bead. And once you exit out, add three. Now these colors definitely show up better <laughs> compared to the last piece I did. So maybe I'll do something like this. One, two, three. Interesting, this one's uh, not quite as circular as the other other one was. And now once you start getting towards the start, your uh, tail thread may get in the way. So again, I just like to tuck that back and hold it in my non-dominant hand. And that prevents it from getting tangled in a knot with uh, the other stuff as you're adding to your stitch. Oh, wait. <laughs> Go through this first. And then we have the seed beads. Okay, there we go. Let's take a look at this. 
How did that turn out? Uh, it's a little wonky. I don't know if that just needs reinforcing or if that's going to be a problem with these beads, these four millimeters. Let me try reinforcing it because I do like the colors, how they show up better than the other piece. Gonna go back through that inner circle. Maybe it'll let me. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. Here we go. I might as well do what I would do anyway, which is um Suffer around till I get to the opposite side of my tail thread. We'll see how it's holding up by that point. Back at home with lunch in the making. Welcome back, Jay Chan. What is for lunch? I'm debating food because I have like enough leftover spaghetti for maybe half a meal. Or I could have that like a responsible human being using up the food in my fridge. Or I could order something from somewhere else, which would either be pizza or um, like the brisket place I like to get from here and then, every now and then. Okay, let's see, how did that Fry, yay, pizza day, hypers, I'm, I'm debating, yeah, of the two I feel more like pizza. I felt like the brisket yesterday, but today I'm like, mm -hmm, pizza. <laughs> okay, that actually, uh, it's kind of wonky, I think, hmm, can I fix that? Okay, that's a little better. It might just need more reinforcing than the other piece would. See how this one's kind of like, burp, and that one's like, burp. <laughs> hmm. I don't know how I feel about this. Hmm. Which is bacon, collie, rice with cream cheese and red pepper flakes. Oh my. Yum. Imagine being responsible in 2021. <laughs> little, little, it's like, who really cares at this point? <laughs> Planning a camping trip and another family is going to be sharing the site with us. Family of four. They bought a 10 person tent. Oh my. <laughs> At least there'll be lots of space. <laughs> Hmm, I don't know if this is gonna work. We're gonna keep going and we'll see if it fixes itself as we go. Again, this is why it's fun to experiment with dis different beads. I'll, uh, I'll show you guys something else I tried. When you guys going camping? I haven't been camping since, oh my goodness, I think I was like 24 the last time I went camping. This is a variation of this pattern I tried, which actually turned out really pretty, but I was using rondelles, which were four by six millimeters, so they're kind of a step up from the four, I think these are like four by three. They're a step up in size, which made it a lot finickier, but I, I do like how it turned out. I, I think that has potential, it's just you need to reinforce way more than you would with these, with these other patterns I've been trying, so. Yeah, and this is the joy of beading. You just experiment and try different things, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it's all part of it. How did Mario go? <gasps> Were you playing Mario? First week of August. Nice. Nice, nice. Uh, whereabouts? If you feel like sharing. If not, that's also fine. Get back in there. Okay. Um, where was I on this piece? Okay, so we're exiting out of the inner seed bead. We're gonna go back out through these two, so we're at the far edge. Where's my, here's my thread, okay. The outskirts of Algonquin on the west side. Nice! Well, that should be fun. Have the kiddos gone on a camping trip before? So, 
started, this is where we were starting at the top. Now we're gonna basically repeat that inner loop, alternating the four millimeter by 11 OC beads. I almost put on an extra seed bead and I didn't need to. <laughs> That's the main thing at this part. Four four millimeters and three seed beads because your fourth seed bead is already on the piece. Mini has same place, good facilities, nice little like to swim in. Oh, so nice! Well, it should be fun. Okay, so now, again, rule of opposites, we're coming out the bottom here, so I'm going to go through the top. Pull that nice and tight. Again, it's normal for it to be a little wonky. We will reinforce this connector cross here. Um, but we'll just rinse and repeat what we did before, which is to go through four millimeter and an 11 O seed bead, come out the other side of that, and then add three. And we'll do that at each of the other three points. Like your skewering technique for picking up the beads, is that typical or is this just what you do? Because I feel like I would need both hands to get those beads on the thread. It's, it depends on <laughs> the beads. With these, the, the reason I like to use Miyuki style seed beads, this is a, a Japanese brand of seed bead, is that they're very uniform and cut similarly. So you might get the odd wonky one here and there, but you can be pretty confident that they're going to be roughly the same size and shape and that uh, it's not going to be too painful to thread them. Other beads will have um, kind of uh, deformities in them or they won't be uniform and those are the ones I tend to find where I need to like pick them up and like personally skewer them myself I can't just neatly pick them up from my my beading mat um, and some of your beads may actually be obstructed and you need to go through and clear out that obstruction of the material um, and that might not even work your bead might break and sometimes you just have to toss those so it's uh, recommended when you're making a piece to kind of screen your beads especially if they're not a brand you know is uh, uniform typically um, so for example do I have them here mm. no they're across the room but even with like my my pearls because these beads tend to stick together sometimes I'll have to go and clear those beforehand because there's nothing worse than getting halfway through your piece and realizing oh my gosh I can't get this through the bead and it's now stuck in my piece. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, you, you gotta know the beads and then sometimes you have to do a little prep work before you start any actual beading to clear that up. Oh, we're getting some near, nice. I love this song. Glorious. Mm -hmm. Makers and I went out and bought a six person tent today. Well, even then it was a bit large for two of us plus two kids. Pretend is like presidential or something. Luxury tent. That point just by camper to hitch to the car. Yeah, no kidding. Semi-related question. Do you make any of your own beads? I haven't tried that yet. I've looked into it here and there using like the, what's that clay called? There's like a nice clay you can mix stuff together with. Um, but I haven't braved it yet. I think it would be really fun though. Okay. Go back through here. That would be a nice uh, cost saver because some of those fancier beads <laughs> and the clay ones can be pretty pricey. But I'm always an advocate of saving on budget where you can. Yeah, I've been uh, playing around with trying different types of crafting streams. Most of my channel is dedicated to gaming. I'll do the odd art stream here and there. Um, but it might be fun to try some other things. So I used to paint ceramics and I used to do toll painting, which is like painting on wood. 
Um, I haven't done either of those in years, but that could be fun. And maybe even painting on canvas, because that's always something I wanted to try doing and just never did. That's not true. I tried a few times with mixed success. <laughs> but practice is a thing. I'm camping with my family all the time. I'm just crammed into a three-person tent with two siblings that I hated. I'm always thinking of my parents' tent because I was the favorite child. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Ah, oh, maybe I'll maybe I'll do some painting streams in the future when I can actually get to Michael's and get supplies because I'm pretty sure my paints are all dried out by now. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. I'm trying to think of all the times I've gone camping. When I was 10, my- I don't know if she's still here. Anonymous, are you still here? And if so, Alberta camping trip. Details. Um, when I was 10, we, uh, my parents and I took off from Ontario and met up with my best friend and her folks in Alberta and did, like, the Banff and the- all the beautiful places out west. Um, so I went camping then, and then, of course, in Alaska, we would- camp on school trips and we would also go to fish camp at the start of every summer. I was usually there for about a week where you'd, you'd camp out usually in your cramped tent and try not to die of terror when a moose trampled through your camp at night. <laughs> it was fun. I miss that. And then I went camping, um, like I said, when I was about 24. A group of my university friends and I as like a graduation thing. We went for a few days on a camping trip. I don't remember where it was though. Somewhere in Ontario. Southern Ontario. There we go. Okay, that blue definitely shows up better than this one did. <laughs> oh no, well now it's showing up. You're such a jerk. <laughs> Silly beads. Show up when I don't really care if you show up. Yeah, I think if I reinforce these, it would sit a little straighter. Maybe? I wonder how these would work with the blue. That could be nice. This pearl with that blue? Hmm. A Wanda. Seems like everyone freaking goes to a Wanda these days. That doesn't ring a bell. It was like... it was... Ugh, I don't even remember. It was not a prominent camping place, let's say that. <laughs> okay, so I'll go add the... Mm, no, I'm gonna reinforce this center part because it's a little wonky still. And then I will add the earring hook. I think I got my fill of camping as a child. I refuse to ever go again. <laughs> Some of my best friends are going camping for 4th of July. I was like, heck no, I'll be at my PCPD. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I think it's one of those things I would try again here and there. I still, I have a, my folks gave me a tent when I moved out on my own for some reason. Um, and I just have not gone since. Glamp, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna request a song on here. Hang on. Uh, so, guys, if you wish, let's see. Let's see what are. If anyone wants to see and vote on upcoming songs or request a song, you can do so at rainwave.cc. That's the music widget I'm using right now. Um, you need an account to request a song, but you can vote. Um, just as a rando on upcoming songs in their list. The place we go is a nice restaurant lodge on. Um, ooh, nice. <coughs> That's not a word. That's also not a word. Green wave. Ooh, Legend of Zelda, heck yes. Lunar, heck yes! Can't vote on that yet, that's fine. I'll keep an eye on it. <laughs> okay, uh, let's tie this bottom thread off. Oh, 
Hello, Miss Megs, you stretchy lady. I was actually curious about the music widget, especially when that Kanye remix came on. Yeah, it's a really great tool. Um, so all the music is from overclockedremix.org, which is basically the place to go if you want video game covers. <laughs> um, but the conditions for streaming the music, they have like a terms of use page you can go and get all the details, but basically you need to... For pre-approved songs, you need to show the title, I think the artist, and have a link back to the OCR website. And to help simplify that, they have kind of pre-approved use of this widget. So anything that's coming through here right now is safe to use. Um, so it's nice if you don't mind just having random tracks. I would love to devise a way to have kind of my own compilation of soundtracks that have been approved, but I don't know how to make widgets myself. <laughs> The guy who made this, I think, was going to look into it eventually. Um, I don't know where it was, like, priority-wise, but... Like, if you wanted, say, a, a more upbeat stream, you could pick songs like that. Or if you wanted more somber, quieter music, you could do that. So this one, you're kind of at the mercy of what gets selected by the widget and by the people's voting. But it's it's also a fun way to, to discover stuff. Like, I've, I've saved a bunch of things to my favorites that I probably never would have discovered. <laughs> Yeah, so everybody using the switches here is the same thing. Exactly, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so I just did my half hitch knot. I'm gonna tie that off one more time. That should be good for here. Blech. Ah, Zelda, so good. Oh, I can vote on Lunar now. Vote, 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 vote. Oh, there's a Dragon Quest one though. Ooh, I'm voting Lunar. I don't care. <laughs> um, speaking of Zelda, so I was planning to stream Breath of the Wild today, but my poor Joy-Con Dr controllers are at their limit. I have that uh, one pint if you're still there. I have ordered the Pro Controller finally. It's happening. That is on the way. <laughs> um, so hopefully more Breath of the Wild is in store. I don't think it gets here till Thursday though, so... Breath of the Wild might be on hiatus for a few days. Okay, uh, I might have enough string to do another one there. Do, 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 do. Mine died mid-game yesterday. Oh no! <laughs> That's unfortunate. Uh, I do have another set of Joy-Cons I could probably use, but I want to try and preserve them. They were fine until I started playing Breath of the Wild and doing combat which involves button mashing and running away in terror. <laughs> That's when they really started to go. Uh, it's recharged now, nice. Da, da, da. Was it Joy-Con Drift? I literally had to unbind my joy kits to, uh, the joysticks to play stuff because it had gotten so bad. Yeah, it's the drift. I might make an attempt to try and fix them myself, but for Breath of the Wild, I'm at the point now where I need to actually progress the plot and fight bosses and stuff, which I'm not ready for it, but it's fine. Mentally. <laughs> and I'm always... When I hit the directional button on the left joystick, it always makes me crouch, which apparently is less of a problem on the Pro Controller, so I just... It was time to invest anyway. I was just being stubborn. Um, okay, now for this one... Hmm. <laughs> are we gonna get Lunar? Heck yes, we are. Bam. Um, what color should I use for you? I almost feel like this would go best. Yeah, I think so. So instead of silver, I'm going to use this kind of bronze color. Stubborn buddies, heck yes! Okay, now I hope I have enough thread. That's getting a little close. <laughs> it should be fine. String that on. Actually, how far did you get in three houses yesterday? I uh, I still need to catch up on the most recent VOD. I also checked my past recording for when I'm allowed to start three houses again, and I beat the Golden Deer run. I believe it was August 29th, which is a bit later in the summer than I thought it was. Uh, so I have to wait till August 29th at least. 
and then I can start my Blue Lions run. But it's really tempting to start it now, because I miss it so much. But that's okay, I have lots of other things. Skyward Sword will be here soon, I need to finish Breath of the Wild. I've got my indies. I just need to wait. I will keep my promise, I will. It's got to last free day of the heartbreak month. Oh, ho, 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 the heartbreak. It hurts. May already be aware, but Nintendo's doing free no question to ask Joy-Con repair in US due to a lawsuit. Ooh. Well, I being in Canada, I don't know if I qualify, but that would be amazing. <laughs> should send my first strike on it. Yeah, I mean, if you can get it free, absolutely. Okay, I think I will reinforce this one last time, then tie this off. Get through there. Come on. There we go. Let's see. I mean, it sort of straightened itself out. <laughs> This wasn't... that stuck a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, I think I will try the blue seed beads with... what was it? Rosewood? Because that's kind of a similar color, but the blue definitely shows up better on camera. Okay, now let's tie this off and these will be done. I wonder if there's any requests. Oop. Okay, so that's that's a good illustration. You probably can't see it very well where my thread got stuck on a seed bead, so I will just go through with my needle, unhook that, and pull it through. Arg, this thread is getting stubborn. <laughs> That one tied up. Oh, oh, oh. No, don't fall off. Don't fall off. Ah, it fell off. <laughs> this is the problem when your thread gets uh, just a little too short for comfort. You have to re-thread it a lot if it falls off the needle. Not 100% sure details because I haven't done it myself, but you know, my company loses a lawsuit about <laughs> how poor their controllers are. They have to prove them for free. That's something. Yeah, it says a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> Okay, did that not actually tie? Yes, just need to tighten it. Okay. Almost done with this earring. I think I will actually tie it up here. <laughs> My cat is snoring. That's adorable. Is it five? Okay. I'm gonna at least try that color combo. Ooh. That's actually not a good situation. So this is what I was getting at before, is um, when you don't use a closed loop, my thread has snuck up here. And thankfully the cut wire is on the opposite side, but that's the sort of situation that can cut your thread or um, make it come off the earring altogether. So you want to avoid that. <laughs> Alright, Thread, I know you're just about done. I just need one more loop and then we're good to go. Oh, oh shoot. <laughs> Got it stuck again. So what happened is the thread got stuck around the top of this 4mm bead and it needs to be down here on the bottom. So we're just going to very gently coax that down with our needle, hopefully. It's being pretty stubborn, there it goes. There we go, okay. Uh, let's see, I want to request a song, let's see, library. Where's my favorites? Uh, oh, I'm not logged in here, that's why. Let me try on 
here. I'm not logged in on here either. Ah, dang it. Okay, never mind. I'm too lazy to deal with that. <laughs> You'll be at the mercy of the algorithm. Okay, so we tied off there. Again, I never like to cut next to where I've tied off. I always go over at least one or two beads. And that gives your knot some protection and helps it hold. Ninja Turtles, nice. We barely had enough thread left. <laughs> that was a bit too close. That's okay. And there it is. Let me just finagle that a little bit better. Now that um, that might just be the wire. This one, it's a bit of a cheaper wire, and uh, I find it's a lot more stiff when interacting with the thread compared to the silver one I had. Ah, there we go. Get to focus. So this one actually does hold the crosses together a bit better as well, same as the uh, fire polish does. So I think the round beads just inevitably will push them together a little bit more. That's okay. It's interesting to see how they... how the bead shape affects the overall... Uh, layout of the bead or the earring. Okay, so I'm going to do this four millimeter pearl bead with these seed beads and then I think I will call it a day after that because I need food. Okay, so we've got enough seed beads. We need pearls. Oh my goodness. That's not food, Maggie. I'm so sorry. It's beads. It's not treats. I'm so sorry, my dear. <laughs> looks very upset with me. Uh, actually, I wonder... Ooh. Maybe these. Maybe these are a bit darker. I think that would look nice. Versus... These? Ooh. Ooh. Gonna be late back to work. Oh no, bye! <laughs> Talk to you take care. I think I'll try those actually now that I'm thinking about it because that will probably show up better on the camera as well. Okay, so we have three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool. Okay, that's good. Oof. Oh, this is so heavy. Ah! Knocking everything over. Part of the challenge, which you guys can't see, is that my webcam is right here and I'm like maneuvering my hands around it. So <laughs> I'm just constantly bumping into it here. We'll make it work though, it's fine. Uh, can I steal thread from any of these? Are any of you long enough? Is this long enough? This is probably long enough. I can at least get one. That's all I care about is getting the color pattern down. Does anyone have plans for the weekend? I keep thinking it's Saturday already, but it's not. Okay, so four seed beans. One, two, three, four. Straighten that tail out so it's not getting in my way constantly. Back through the four. I'm surprisingly functional today. I got my second vaccine yesterday and thought I'd be like completely out of commission today, but so far it's mostly just my arm. It's a little sore still, but not anywhere near as sore as it was the first one I got, which surprised me. So I thought this one would be worse. Just chill and clean my house, I guess. <laughs> I should clean my house, but it's my last weekend of my vacation and I really don't feel like spending it cleaning. But I said that was one of the things I was going to do while I was on vacation, so I probably should. 
Uh, what is life? One, one, two, no. two, two, come back here, three, three, and four, okay, we got the four, oh yeah, those show up so much better. <laughs> I think I'll probably end up doing this color pattern for the actual workshop. I'm surprised I haven't just come up with a new analog stick that fits the same dimensions, right? I think. Oh yeah, that's so much better. I think. Maybe? Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, tail, you get out of the way. Da, 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 da. Gotta hold off on getting the vaccine until my doctor says I should, but I'm not looking forward to it at all. I already hung over all the time. Don't want to feel sick on top of that. Oh god. It's- oh wait, did I- no, that's right, okay. I was surprised, like... Oh, wait. No, that's right, okay, sorry. <laughs> I had a brain blurt. Um, the worst I had yesterday, I got really tired, but I was already tired to begin with, so I don't know how much of that was the vaccine versus just being tired. And then I had a I had a headache for like an hour and a half, and I I took I had a nap and I took an Advil, and then I was fine. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I I suppose there's still a chance I could feel crappy later on today, but so far I've been faring okay. But yeah, my mom's kind of in the same boat. She has some um, she's immunocompromised. And has had Bell's palsy in the past, so they're a bit worried about potentially triggering an episode, which means she hasn't gotten anything yet. And because she is currently in the US with my stepdad, she can't really come to Canada to visit her kids, and she's very distressed, and we miss her. And uh, would love to see her, but until she gets doctor's approval, we're not really sure when that can happen. You youngins, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I got tired the first time too, so I was kind of expecting that, but the headache was new. Oh yeah, that color combo definitely shows better. Beating! Hello, Max! Yes! Beating. What was- oh, what was that Michael Jackson joke? Uh, just beat it. Just beat it. I'm just beating it. <laughs> How goes your Friday, Max? I'm just trying different color combina combinations to figure out what I want to use for my workshop. Let's beat it! Yeah. You know it. My cat just looked at me like I'm insane. I mean, you're not wrong, Maggie, but I could use without the judgment, please. You are at least as crazy and weird as I am. Hmm? And you puked on my floor this morning. I'm still not impressed. Erp. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh Uh-oh. What'd I do? Uh Oh man, the more you work this uh, fishing thread, the crankier it gets. Let me just put that tail out of the way. Boop. On meds that lower my immune system severely, so before I get the vaccine and need to get a lower dose, it may not be as dangerous as easily. Ah, oh, geez. I hear it. Yeah, it sounds like similar to my mom. You've got immune stuff, it's you gotta be careful. Well, wishing you all the best. I'm sure that's stressful. Friday's okay, I was teaching a class or trying because my mind's still foggy because of the vaccine. <laughs> did you get yours? Uh, you got one. When, when did you get it again? Was that yesterday or was that earlier? I remember you saying we're getting it soon. Tuesday. Okay, I was like, I feel like I heard about it, but I can't remember. Let's see. Do I like this? Do I like this? I think for demo purposes, it's probably the best combination. 
I'm still complaining. <laughs> hmm. Demo equals but Yes, yes, one pint. Yes, it does mean but in Japanese. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think for visibility? Which color contrast works the best? One, two, or three? Ah, oh, as I knock it over. Three in this lighting. Three and two in that order. Okay, so maybe this one works better. I'm uh, the only reason I was hesitating was these were a little bit finicky to get the pattern straightened out. But maybe if I find, like I originally planned, use this color sea bead or this color pearl with this color sea bead. Maybe that. Let's uh, let's do that on the next one here, and we'll see how that looks. It's a slightly blind color person. You should take my advice in regards to visibility. <laughs> That's actually very useful because I care about accessibility and if I have anyone in my audience who deals with color blindness of any form, that's something I should be mindful of. Okay, we're gonna tie this off. This is just a sample. And then we'll try another one with the original plan I had. <laughs> Let me see how that works. Why does this sound familiar? Ninja Warriors. Ah, that's why. Okay. Ooh, we've got Earthbound. Hmm. Coming up, maybe. Oof, this is actually really loose. I might need to reinforce it more. Ow. Just poked myself. Mm -hmm. Twitch's color palette for chat names must try a few minutes. I could definitely see that, yeah. have the same color. <laughs> I can't count the number of times I've accidentally missed someone's comment in chat because I thought it was someone else's that I'd already read. <laughs> it's a problem. Okay, uh... Did I, did I tie that off or did I just... That's the thing, you get in the zone and then you're like, wait, did I actually do the thing I was supposed to? I don't know. I'll tie this side off. I should order pizza because I think that's what I will do for dinner after all. Do you digital accessibility stuff for a living. There are so many sites that I have a conniption for. Conniption is that a word? I don't know that word. But yes, can confirm. I've <laughs> heard the rants. <laughs> They are good rants to go on. Accessibility matters. And yet, is very often neglected. Oh, oops. Okay, so same thing. I got my thread stuck on this top little seed bead, so I'm gonna dig that out. Come here, come here, you stubborn thing. Just pull back on that and bring it over and carefully pull down. Oh, this thread is getting short again. Why do I do this to myself? Oh, goodness. Okay, I think we'll tie off over here. Dark Souls taught me what conniption is. Okay, I gotta look at that. You've triggered my inner librarian. A fit of rage or hysterics. Ooh, very fitting. Well, now I know. Oh, goodness, that's very... Oh, that thread is very small. Okay. There we go. Ooh, FF6. Heck yes, I'm voting that. FF6. 
FF6 vote, oh no. It's going against a request, we might not get it, that's okay. The other day I realized while trying to play Age of Empires 2 with some friends, please let me choose the yellow or red color and not the infinite range of blue, light, blue, purple color teams, oh god. The pain is real. Okay, that's gonna be good enough. Uh, we will snip this. And this. Oh gosh. There we go. Okay. We have a nice little sample there. So now. Go back one more time. I'm sorry, Maggie. It's still not treats, no matter how many times you hear it. I'm so sorry. One, two, three, four. One pint in Google just taught me what conniption is. I had never heard that word before. I like it. It's It seems like a versatile word to use. Okay. Actually, I need to step away for a second, folks. So hold tight, and I'll be right back. Hello, I have returned. This. Okay. Oh, we have Octopath as a potential. Let me vote that. Heck yes. I still need to finish Octopath. How have you been enjoying that, Max? I haven't caught one of your Octopath streams yet, but it's a great game. And someday I will finish it. And bead pouch sounds like treat pouch. <laughs> We've all had a learning moment. Made it back to work technically on time. Nice. <laughs> People have a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, I need 
need thread. I need thread. Is this enough thread? This should be enough thread. Uh, mm. No, I'll do this one. Should I reinforce this? Or I should tie this off. Ugh. Ugh. My need to have things not fall apart gets the better of me once again. <laughs> Mistakes were made. <laughs> I've streamed it this week, but I'll be back soon as my eyes stop tanking the whole vaccine effects. Uh. I think I got about 55 hours in, and then I was getting tired of the level grinding, slash I got distracted by Fire Emblem Three Houses, predictably, and then just never picked it up. Even though I said I wasn't going to be the person who did that, I was totally the person who did that. Uh. <laughs> ah, I keep doing my camera. Stop. You stay there, please. Thank you. <gasps> Miss Max, did you have a nice snack? I had to go feed my cat. That's why I left. She was getting very cranky with me. Did you have a nice snack, my lady? Yes. That, did that go through that beat? It did. Mm -hmm. During the game, the music is really great, but kind of feeling the dungeons are getting kind of repetitive. Still a great game. Yeah, I think that's where I was at. Oh, FF9. I keep voting for things and none of them are coming through. Come on, FF9. Don't let me down. Yeah. Again, I keep going like off screen here. I need to not do that. Beaten it with a couple tunes, but can't be bothered to finish all eight. Fair enough. Don't understand how to vote. Where's the vote button? If you go... to rainwave.cc, the first link in that little blurb, it should show a coming up vote now list, and if you are... you can, you can vote for that regardless of who you are, whether you do or don't have an account. If you want to request songs, you will need to create an account through this uh, platform, and then you can actually search and request things as well. Is this going to be enough thread? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> I went to the effort to tie it off and used up too much thread. That's fine, we'll just get a new one. Ew, Manx, why are you chewing your nails? That's gross. That's gross, my dear. And noisy. There we go. I might, mm, it might be enough, but I'm not gonna risk it. <laughs> Let's just get a new piece of thread, and I will tie you off later. Okay. Do fire line again. Don't see anything to click on to vote. Oh no! Um, just open that and see if I'm getting the same thing. It's weird. What do you see on the screen? Can you describe it to me? At Octopath, I was looking for a specific part, and then I saw you jump like 10 levels. What I assume was a very intense off screen boredom. I do tend to level grind off stream, so <laughs> that sounds like something I would have done. <laughs> oh, wait, when did I get two of these out here? Uh, where did you come from? Okay, I have too much thread. <laughs> Album pictures, links to go to the songs, and little bars to the side. And the little bars to the side don't say vote on them. Put 
the Chinese one. I hope I survive. All will be well, Max. I am sure all will be well. If you are still here and you got it on Tuesday, I think you're probably safe. Okay, so we need four seed beads. This will be the last one, folks, and then I really do need to go get food because I am hungry. Mm -hmm. So I'll probably do one more stream of beating before Wednesday just to do like a legit practice run as if I was actually teaching the workshop. That'll be a bit more formal um, once I've got all my stuff down. <laughs> but even then, the workshop itself is pretty informal compared to most of the teaching that I do. So it's, it's just a way to have fun, hang out with people, learn new things. Do, 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 do. Do you not use a knot for the thread on the needle, just tension? So for what I'm starting just now, it's um, creating tension through reinforcing, going back through that loop, and I will continue to do that throughout the piece. And then once I get to the end, when I add the earring wire, and when I tie off the other end, that's when I will do actual knots to complete the piece. But with something like this, you could probably just thread it through and cut it without having to knot it because it's there's enough tension in the weaving to probably hold it without it coming undone. Um, and because this is just going to dangle off an ear, it's not getting a lot of wear and tear like a bracelet might, then it's less of concern as well. Um, but because I'm paranoid, I have to have at least one or two knots to feel like the world will come apart. So <laughs> I always do at least one or two knots in my pieces regardless of whether they need them or not. Um, but for the most part, this piece can rely on tension alone. The paranoia is real, yes. So real. Okay, let's hope this combo works. So one, two, one, two. Get on there. See, this is a stubborn one that I had to push on with my finger. One, two. And one. Ugh, this one too. Are you gonna, are you gonna cooperate? Come on now. No, you're not. Okay, there we go. So that was one where I had to poke it through the material a little bit was closed off on this side. Okay, so four four millimeter beads separated by a single seed bead. Oh, just simply putting your thread on the needle didn't look like you looped it through. No, no, it's just... There's no knot here, it's just two it in place. I will um, tug on it just to keep that thread from coming back out, but I don't do any knotting for the actual needle onto the thread. Oh, we got FF9. Nice. And I see FF6 is an option again. Vote! Vote! Is- oh, wait a second. Do I have that muted? Are you guys hearing this music? Has this been muted the whole time? No, never mind. Okay, phew. <laughs> it was showing up, the, the little speaker icon had a, a slash through it, so I was like, oh my god, has it been muted this whole freaking time? <laughs> phew, okay, good, I'm glad you hear it. The guy who gave me the vaccine even made the joke saying that if anyone wanted to read the vaccine information, it was in Chinese with no subs. <laughs> oh goodness. Oh man, FF9 is such a good game. I will be streaming it at some point. I want to do 4 through 9, but that's probably a ways off because the backlog is real. Uh, okay, this needs to go through this side. Do, do, do. Wait. Yeah. Do, 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 okay, so same thing, that's coming apart a little bit, so I'm just gonna tug that, hold it with my left hand, 
pull this through, that'll make it nice and taut. Actually, favorite this. I like this a lot. <laughs> I favorite you. Oh, I'm not logged in. Boo. Okay, it's fine. I stream so much FF, but I just can't be bothered to put in the hours of stream for a classic JRP. They are intensive. I hear ya. I actually, when I started streaming, it my intention was to primarily be JRPGs with a dash of indies, and it's kind of reversed in that it's mostly indies with a dash of JRPGs now. <laughs> just because of that, like they. They're amazing, but they take a long time, and I don't like to spend hours on stream just level grinding. So I tend to try and do that off stream, but then it's hard to like time it with the actual plot progression, etc, etc, so... Eh. Okay, that doesn't want to go through. Come on, come on, you're loosening the piece here. Ugh. Just such a commitment as much as I love them. Yeah, I hear ya. Ugh. Oh goodness. This is not a stray. Here we go. We have another FF9 playthrough. Yes! It was actually the first Final Fantasy I ever beat on my own. It would have been FF6, but we all know how that story went. <laughs> yeah, I uh, played through it. When was that? That must have been undergrad. Just going on a decade now. My goodness. Pixel Remaster Collection coming up. That there is! I've, I've always wanted to stream FF4 and FF6 in particular. And I have FF6 on my uh, SNES Classic that I could have streamed, but if it's going to be a Pixel Remaster on PC, I will probably go that route. Oof, these are very not happy. Okay, let's reinforce this. It would have been second year of undergrad, that's when it was. Wow. So I've beaten, I did FF9, FF8, started FF7, got to wards the end of disc one, and was like, I know it's coming, I can't do it. <laughs> Just didn't pick it up again. <laughs> I've played the remake. Um, and I want to beat the actual full game myself before that finishes, however long that will take. I watched my brother play it growing up, so like, I know it, but I need to play it myself. Um, it just, it hurts, and I'm not ready. <laughs> so I figure I'll probably do seven first on stream, and then maybe six, because I've beaten eight and nine, and then I'll do those at some point down the road. So maybe seven, six. I've never played five at all. I have it on a uh, PlayStation PS1 that I just never played. So it might make sense to do like seven, six, five, four, and then go back and do eight and nine, I guess. And I should probably do ten at some point too. I have a lot of games to play. <laughs> I pulled a Sonic the Movie move with the first PC remasters of those games. Oh, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. I never watched Sonic the movie. I remember the horrifying horrors of what it first looked like. Watched my brother play FF7 too, got stuck at Fort Condor and got distracted. Nice. My brother would always play it before and after school, so it was like our little bonding time. And then when he didn't want to play, but wanted to pretend to let me play, he'd be like, Sarah, you get to level grind! That's so exciting! And I was just so happy to be playing it that I was like, okay! <laughs> 
anything to play FF7, so he'd like go get dinner and chill. <laughs> I did all his level grinding for him. Uh, being the younger sibling is fun. <laughs> I think I got just past, um, oh, what's the canyon place with Red 13? What is that called? Oh god, my FF7 cred! No! No! Anyway, I got just past there and then I was like, I'm ready to stop now. <laughs> Cosmo Canyon, thank you. I was like, it also starts with a C. My brain is- I'm gonna blame that on vaccine after effects. I am an FF7 nerd, I know these things. Cough, cough. <laughs> yeah. He was pretty good for an older brother. I think the worst he ever did was made me make his coffee and level grind for him. But we're also nine years apart, so he was mature enough to not be a jerk to me. <laughs> and be patient with my younger sibling shenanigans. For the most part. There may have been an incident where he put fake bugs in my bed and I've been terrified of them ever since, but aside from that, he's a good brother. What is this coming out of? Oh, there, okay. I did start to, I did start playing the remake on stream. I beat it and tried to stream it the first time and that was when I didn't know how to stream yet, so that didn't work. I've done one session on stream since, and would like to maybe go back to that at some point, but it wasn't top of the list priority. It's such a good game, though. And if I had a PS5, I would do the Yuffie DLC, but I don't. <laughs> My heart. What's a little scarred for life between siblings, right? It's fine. It's fine. Uh. <laughs> Like a teacher that he shouldn't mess with me. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I was being particularly annoying that day. Someday I'll get him on stream to tell it because he tells it and remembers it so much better than I do. I think I blacked out the memory, but <laughs> I was being annoying and he's like, what's the best way to get back at my sister? <laughs> Fake bugs in her bed. <laughs> I was like, what, three or four? I don't know. I've been mortified of bugs ever since. My brother got so mad at me because I got on his FF7 save file and accidentally did the Yuffie side quest where she leaves the party for a while. He went and bought the Prima God to figure out how to deal with it. Oh no! <laughs> this is how I got the scar, pretty much. I think the worst thing that I ever did to my brother's save file was uh, he had pretty much fully completed A Link to the Past back on the Super Nintendo and he was letting me and my cousins play. And somehow, I don't know what I did with the Super... Nintendo controller, I hit like all the buttons I could at once and it just wiped his entire game file. Like the entire save was gone in an instant and he was so mad and he banished me to the stairs and I was sitting there crying while my cousins got to keep playing with him and my mom comes down and it's like, what is wrong? Why are you bawling your eyes out like this? Like, can I help you? <laughs> it's like, yeah, my brother will let me play this game. I didn't mean to do that. And I just like go on this rant and she's like, okay, your sister didn't mean to wipe your game. You need to be a bit understanding here. And he's like, I don't want her to touch my games anymore ever again. I was like, uh -huh, I'm sorry. And then he begrudgingly let me play because my mom forced him. But I felt really bad. Like that would suck. <laughs> I'm so sorry, brother. <laughs> uh yeah. I were going to sleep over and the girls gave me a giant cricket and let me cuddle with it when I fell asleep. <laughs> oh no! Giant cricket. I... I used to like, play with crickets in the grass, so I might have been okay with that. But... Most other things, probably not. Oh no, poorness, I know I felt really awful. And now that I'm older, and I know how much that would hurt, I just feel even worse. <laughs> uh, but for the most part, I think that was one of our, our worst uh, fallouts. <laughs> so, okay. We now have the final verdict, folks. Of all the samples we have made today. So, when I'm teaching this workshop, which of these do you think has the best color contrast? We'll say one, two, three, 
for. I think I still know which one I like, but <laughs> I would love to hear from you guys. In terms of visibility, which do you think works best? Or you can use like top left, right, bottom right, bottom left, whatever's easier. Singer sibling, I can very easily imagine your pain in that situation. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Wouldn't let your brother get anywhere near your switch in your brother the wild safe file. We are we are very far apart. He is over in Quebec, whereas I am not. <laughs> so we should be good. We should be good. We have a vote for number four, okay. Thoughts from the group? The mid-right one. What does mid-right mean? <laughs> four is good, so I'm seeing we have two votes. I'm assuming you guys mean this one for four. So I tried to get a closer color to this. This one's still a bit lighter, but I think this definitely contrasts better than this now that I see them side by side. Okay, this one's definitely off the roster. From the right and upside down. Didn't catch the numberings, but the one right above the very bottom right. Okay, so this one here? It looks like these two would be. Yes, gotcha. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah. I think that one does hold the cross shapes better too, so what I might do, hmm, I might practice with both of them a bit more and see which one works better for demo's sake, but I can definitely bring the other one in as an example, so I think they could both work what's better against here. Both pretty close from afar. Okay, cool. Thank you guys, that's really helpful. Um, so I guess I will leave it there for today. Whew. I'm glad I figured out a color scheme for what to demo. That was <laughs> part of the hard part. And I appreciate your feedback along the way. I'm gonna see if anyone is online to raid because I need food. I'm so hungry. Uh, let's see here. Anyone on? Mm. Most of my usuals are not on. Does anyone have recommendations? Like I said, I will be back in the next few days to do a more official workshop stream to test these out and test out my instructions and hopefully be able to do it within 30 minutes because that's all the time I have. <laughs> um, and then I don't know if I'll get any other streams in before then because I have to grade some stuff. If that doesn't get done this weekend, I will try though. We'll see. <laughs> Thanks for the stream and have a good one! <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out! Among Us- oh, is that happening? I haven't checked Discord, are we- is that a thing? I forgot to check that. Uh, let me pull that up. There may or may not be an Among Us stream tonight, depending on availability and hopefully my arm will still be functioning by then, if not. Nobody on right now to be honest, I hear you, I'm like, hmm. I'm struggling for ideas here. Oh, wait! Imp just signed on. Shall we go give Imp a raid? I haven't done that in a while. Looks like Monster Hunter Rise. I think we'll do that. Okay, I'll get that set up. I'm going to switch so I can actually hear things when I get over there and say hello. You guys are going to be joining. We will see you there. If not, I hope you have a great rest of your Friday and your weekend if I don't talk to you before then. Uh, oh, are you asking for a Discord link? That's not public at the moment, but I am happy to send you a rec or a, a link if you would like. Uh, have a good two or whatever your favorite number is. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, Max. Um, red, yes. Yes. 
Right. Yeah, I, uh, I've been debating. It's like a, a long-term goal to make it public. I just haven't quite done that yet. So I'm like, I need to set rules, make sure it's moderated, all that junk. But if and when it does go public, I'm happy to provide that those details as well. Um, so yeah, if I don't see you guys for the rest of the weekend, have a great weekend. And I guess we will wrap it up there. So we'll see you on the other side. And have a good one. Talk to you soon, everybody.